Hello friends, this video on probability part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 16. Now I'll take a new topic called partition of a sample space. So the set of events E1, E2, E3 till EN is set to represent a partition of a sample space if, if you take the intersection of any two of the set you get phi that is there, is there is no common element no common element within the set right you take any two set there will not be any common element. also if you take the intersection union of these two uh, events you take all the events what you get is the sample space also probability of each of these are non-zero that is they have some probabilities that is if you see that even e1 to en represents a partition of sample space if they are pairwise disjoints that is you take any two pairs they are disjoints right there is no common element in them they're exhaustive that means if you take all you get the sample space and they have non-zero probabilities probabilities of each of these is zero i'll repeat once again they are pairwise disjoints because you take any two pair, it doesn't have any common element. They are exhaustive. If you take all the elements, you take the union of these, you get the sample space and they have all non-zero probabilities. Now let's take theorem of total probability. So if I have already partitioned my sample space into these segments E1 into En and suppose that each of these events has non-zero probabilities. I have this big sample space and I have divided this into E2, E1, E2, E3, E N. There are four, uh, so many segments, I divide this. And let A be any event. A be any event. And I want to find the probability of A. Then the probability of A has to be probability of even, the first set, into probability of A given even, plus probability of second set E2, into probability of a given e2 you keep doing this till the nth event you have into probability of a given a that is what the theorem of total probability says it helps us to find solutions to a lot of questions where this particular let's suppose i have to find the probability of some event a where this event a is dependent on a lot of factors right so what i do is i divide my whole sample space into a lot of factors for example let's suppose a is probability that the work is done on time right work done on time and they give me so many events for example the strike happened the strike happened right or uh, the labors are ill or you know what in this e3 can be machine is faulty right washing machine is faulty or there is a holiday today holiday today or it can be there is no power cut power supply so See, for a work to happen, work depends on a lot of factors. For example, a strike can happen. If strike happens, the work is hampered, right? If the workers are on leave, some workers on the leave, the ill, the 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 production is hampered. The machines are not working. The production happens. The power supply is not. The, the production happens. So, so the production of a goal depends on a lot of factors. In the real world, right? So what we do is we we break the whole thing into diff different uh, events. And all these events are mutually exclusive, you see, right? They are all exclusive events. And then we use this uh, formula that the probability the work done is on time will be uh, what is the probability that uh, no, uh, the strike happens? And when strike happens, what is the probability the work done is on time? What is the probability the, the, the uh, worker is ill? When the worker is ill, what is the probability the work is done on time? What is the probability that the machine is faulty, right? When the machine is faulty, there will be some production, maybe 20%, 30% on the uh, regular rate. So what is the what is the probability or what is the rate of work done when the machine is uh, faulty? When there's no power supply, still some work can be done, right? But it will not be 100%. So in that case, what is the probability that the water, the power supply went off? And when the power supply went off, what was the rate of work done? Similarly, in the holiday, also some workers come actually. So, so those, those things taken care of, 
So you you end up getting this formula saying that you have one sample space which depends on a lot of factors. You can say that you can divide those into various events, and those has those has to be mutually ex exclusive and exhaustive events. Why? Because if you take any two events, there should not be any common elements. And if you club all those events, that becomes a sample space. So you convert those into different events, and then you apply the theorem of probability to get the probability of one particular task. I'll take my example. My similar example is a person has undergone a construction job. The probabilities are 0.65 that there will be a strike, right? 0.8 that the construction job will be com completed on time if there is no strike and point through the construction job will be completed if there is a strike. So this what I have done is I have divided into two events. One guy is strike and no strike. Only two scenarios they have taken in this case. Just to uh, give you a simple question. So there are two events, right? Strike and no strike. So probability that is a strike is 0.65. So probability of there is no strike will be 0.35. Correct. Now I'll write here. Now in this I have to find the work done. This is my work done. This is my work done actually. Right? Let, let this, this be work done. So probability that the work is done if there is a No strike. If there is no strike, that is, if there is no strike, the probability of the work done is 0 0.80. Correct. Probability of the construction job will be completed on time if there is a strike is 0.32. That is probability of work done on time if there is if there is a strike. If there is a strike is 0.32. Correct. Probability for strike is 0.65, right? Given. So these three things are given. 0.65 is the probability of the strike. 0.35 is the probability of no strike. And then you have to some you have some work done. Work done is depending on the strike actually. So work done, if there is no strike, the probability of getting it on time is 0.8. Work done getting on time, there is a strike is 0.32. Find the probability that the work done is on time. So probability that the work done is on time is nothing but probability of strike into probability of work done on strike plus probability of no strike into probability of work done if there is no strike. I hope you understand this. The same formula we have used because we have converted this guy into only two events strike and non-strike. So I'm just using this formula. Correct. So probability of Strike is what? 0.65. Probability of work done if there is a strike is 0.32. Plus probability of no strike is what? 1 minus 0.65 that is 0.35. Correct? 0.35. Into probability of work done when there is no strike is 0.8. Correct. If you saw this becomes 0 0.208 plus this becomes 0 0.280 and this becomes 0 0.480 and that is my answer. Very simple. So the thing you have to understand is in this case my work done is depending on various factors. The factors in this example was strike and non-strike. So the probability of the work done is on time, if the strike is different, if there is no strike is different, right? The, the probabilities are different. And I have to find the probability that the work is done on time. Now since work done is depending on strike and non-strike, so I, what I did was I divided my whole sample space into two events, strike and non-strike. Strike was 65% and non-strike is 35%, right? And I have also these probabilities of work done, if there is a strike or non-strike. Then I use my formula to get the answer.
This is the application of theorem of total equality. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.